I'm Mohiuddin Muzumdar. I work at Intel Corporation. I co-chair the electrical work group in PCIC and also the optical work group. And as part of the electrical work group, I also co-chair the cabling sub-team that developed the copper link cable specifications. PCA SIG in late 2020, based on some feedback from the member companies, it was realized that as we are going to PCA 5.0, which are bringing 32 giga transfer per second, the limitations from PCB technologies was becoming pretty significant. And it was pretty clear that we need more additional ingredients like cables, which provides five to seven X lower loss per inch. And that realization started and kicked off this project that PCAC started. So what this is for is to give the flexibility to build platforms that can have further reach and modularity. So all of those is pretty much started that and that's what we are marching on. So in the um, copper link cable specification, we have two types of cables. One is called internal cable and one is external cable. So internal, just by the name of it, it's usually internal to the box, meaning we have a platform within the box. We could be connecting various components so that either could be going from motherboard to an add-in card or there could be chips that are connected instead of going through the PCB, they could be jumping through a cable going from one part of the system to the other. And the external cable, usually just by the name of the external, it is external to the box. So it is usually connecting box to box. And like in data centers, usually you have racks of servers and other devices. So it could be going from one box to another box. So there's some uh, fundamental technical differences because anytime we go external, we have to worry about electromagnetic radiation. So external cable has to have those covered and internal cable doesn't have to. So some of those mechanical and other electrical requirements are different and usage cases are also very different. So we developed both of these to address the various market segments, but there are fundamental differences between their specific mechanical form factors and their reaches. Like in internal, within a box, usually one meter is sufficient. Many applications could be within half a meter. External could be very short, or two boxes sitting next to each other. Also, the two boxes that are could be far from each other. With that far distance, we are limiting it up to about two meter with the quality that we have specified. So the copper link specification of this PCI-6 copper initiative, one of the major imperative for us was to do it as soon as possible. Usually doing is development of a cable spec from the scratch could take easily five to 10 years, but we wanted to make it very fast. So what we did is we collaborated with SNIA and SFF TA 1016 is the specification that was already done, a very well developed hardware and mature specification. So based on that, we developed the internal cable spec and that not only leveraged all the work that industry had already done to make it robust and capable. So PCIC basically did additional work to develop like high speed electrical specification, sideband specification, test methodology and all of those. So the combination of these two org and standard bodies is truly bringing something very quickly, high quality and open ecosystem, and that we believe will enable the ecosystem to come up with innovative solutions. And similarly, for external cable, there was a so-called CDFP connector. We took that and it came from MSA that was donated back into SNIA. And SNIA started a new project called SFFT1032. So that is standardization is happening in the SNEA while we have standardized all other aspects of this. So combination of these two is going to give an industry an open solution and it's going to be as robust as SFFT1016. And we're really excited that we have now solved this problem for both PCA 5.0 and 6.0 and the work group is continuing to work on 7.0. So we expect, I mean, when we started the copper link project, our 
goal immediately was to support at least PCI 5 and 6 so because we did not see how to improve it to PCI 7. Now we are getting close to PCI 7 or basis specification. We are seeing more hopes that this potentially can be extended, meaning that PCI 7.0 at 128 gigatransfer per second, we should be still able to use copper cable in addition to optical and other advancements that are coming in. So we will continue our work to push the limits and develop the new specification. At the same time, uh, we will be supporting the industry in terms of taking it and from here to real broad applications in the marketplace. So copper link cables, if you look at the internal cable, it will be satisfying a lot of needs where a, like a storage card could be connected to the motherboard or it could be overcoming some of the PCB models. It also provides modularity for various applications that could be AI machine learning is of course a growing area that could make advantage of it, but also for this type of new applications that are being driven by Gen AI and other new things will require bigger clusters where things could move from box to box. And that type of application, it's in HPC and various other things. We will see continuous growth of this type of cables. And of course, future is unpredictable. So we believe that this provides real ingredients that system builders will innovate in many different ways that we can probably even cannot think of all today. And the best place to learn about copper link and internal and external cables is to check PCIC website. Those specifications are already published and available. And also, if you want to engage into the actual spec development and how what is continuing in the future, uh, join the PCIC work groups like electrical work group it will be the best place. And uh, cable development are happening under the cable sub team but as an electrical work group member, you get access to all of them.